Hello everyone. Uh, today we are starting a new art project around radial symmetry. Uh, make sure you've watched your do now because there's some information about radial symmetry as well as it being 20% of your grade for today. And 60% of our grade is our art project today. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and show you what your art project looks like when you first start out. All right, here we are. So I went ahead and just kind of you can change all of this, but this is just kind of a starting off point for anyone who needs it. Um, the first thing that I need to do is turn on some guidelines so that I can see um, the lines of symmetry for my radial symmetry. So if I go to view, guides, show guides, that will show those four lines there and you can see they go right through and I'm building into this one square. Let me show that again. I'll get rid of it. Now I can't see my guidelines. View, guides, show guides. Bam. So now I have guidelines. And that's really important because for today, we're not building in all four squares. We're only building into this one square over here. And I'm creating just a fourth of the design this week. And then we'll work on expanding the design to make a full radial symmetry image next week. So your primary tool today is actually going to be the shape tool. The shape tool is a circle on top of a square. And I know it's a shape tool because when I hover my mouse over it, it will tell me, hey, shape tool. So you have a lot of options with the shape tool. Here are kind of your basic shapes as well as some other unique shapes. You have arrows, these call outs, which could potentially be interesting. Like for example, I'm a big fan of this like diamond and star and you know, I don't know if you want to use the equation ones. For this particular project, it tends to work best, best with more like just basic shapes like squares and triangles, maybe a crescent moon, like these kind of shapes, like a cylinder. I don't know. It just looks weird um, trying to make it a part of the composition. But at the end of the day, these are your artistic choices. As long as it has radial symmetry, I respect your choices. So let's say I want to add a crescent moon. I'm going to create my crescent moon shape and when I'm initially dragging this I have a lot of options about how thick I want it, how tall I want it. So I kind of got to play around until I like the shape of it. Once I release my mouse it will become a shape and it will be filled with that light blue. Um, for now I've just been making my shapes white or black. We'll talk about color in just a little bit and of course like I don't know I don't like it in that orientation. So you're probably going to be using this following step a lot today, which is to rotate it. So when you have a shape selected, there is this circle here that will allow you to rotate it. So if I click on that, sorry, yep, apologies. There we go. And I can rotate it and I can kind of see how much it's going to rotate before I let go but I can just keep adjusting it until I'm happy with the rotation. And then I can kind of move it where I want to be. Now, what if I'm not happy with it being on top. So I'm going to go to arrange order. I'm going to send to back. Aha, that's better. I like that because now it's got this shape on top. So you're going to change the order of shapes. Again, if I want to bring it back to the top, arrange, order, bring to front. Arrange, order, send to back. You'll probably be using that a lot as well. I would like this shape to be bigger. If you want to change the sh size of a shape, use the little square in the corner and then we can move it back. Okay, I'm much happier with that. I would like, I like the thicker outline to help define those shapes. So if you want to change the border, instead of being a thin, tiny little one pixel, you can change the sizes of it. Three pixels, here's eight pixels, super thick. I mean, it goes as thick as 24. So those are also some artistic choices that you get to make. I'm going to stick with three for now. 
Alrighty, I'm liking that so far. And so I would just continue to build my design. Like I said, you are more than welcome to delete these shapes if you do not want them. I just thought y'all might like a starting off point. And I will just um, go through it now. I'm gonna make some more shapes. Kind of like a oval shape. Yeah, I like this oval shape. Rotate it, remember I rotated to the circle because I kind of want everything radiating out. Always thinking about how do my shapes interact with one another? I'm actually not digging that oval. I decided to delete it using the delete or backspace button on my keyboard. I think I want to repeat this shape. Beautiful. This time I'm going to make it bigger, have a little bit of variety. For now, I'm going to keep it white, but I will be adding color in a little bit. Do I dig that? I do dig that. It's like a little crown. Like I said, I do want to play with some of the thicknesses a little bit. Cool. Now, if I want to quickly make a copy of this shape, I can go to Edit, Duplicate. And it will make an exact copy of that. But I actually want it a little bit smaller. I want to put it inside here. So I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Ooh, not that small. Put it inside. And I'm going to fill it with black just to kind of see how that looks. I like that a lot. That's starting to look lovely. And so I would continue my design until it's pretty much filled up the space. Um, just using those same basic steps, shape tool, select my shape, rotate as necessary using the rotate, resize as necessary, adjusting my thicknesses, however I want. Once you're happy with your design, you can start to add color. So here's an example, view guides, show guides. Here's an example of a, like a finished version with color. Um, so you can see here, I've done a great job of really filling this space without going off the page, as well as uh, choosing colors that go well together. My, my rules, they're not really rules, let's think of them as guidelines. My guidelines for color are usually to pick one dominant color. For me, that's red. Red is the, most, the color I use most often, plus two supporting colors. And I use orange and this blue color to support the red. If you start to use like eight different colors, your work starts to look like clown bar. Um, so you keep it restricted. And of course, you can keep playing around with it. So um, you can change the colors by just selecting the shape and changing those colors up. Maybe I want to go like a lighter orange for this one. And you'll also notice that you can actually change the color of the border. So you can see here, I made it red. It used to be black, but then I decided it would look better as red. Uh, you can also do gradients. You can see here that I did a gradient here. So, you know, here's your solid colors. If you click over to gradient, there's a lot of cool options that can add kind of uh, an interesting factor. And of course, you can still things still leave things black and white. So this is a project where you have a lot of choices and it's really about thinking through those choices of you know what are my main shapes how am i giving this balance by repeating those shapes do my colors go together um, am i happy with my design where could i move this so that it would be more successful things of that nature um, and just playing around with it until you're absolutely happy with the final result so what is due today is obviously we're not doing the whole thing today. You only owe me one square filled with shapes and designs that you have made and are happy with and that are colored with a color scheme that you are happy with. And that's what's due today. We'll continue working on this next week. I will stop sharing my screen. And I cannot wait to see what you come up with today.